Hi, welcome back. I'm certainly glad you could join me today. And I thought today we'd just do a fantastic little painting, maybe sort of like a little fantasy painting. I think you'll enjoy it. So I tell you what, let's have them start out, run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've done up here. Today I've taken a little black gesso on my standard old 18 by 24 inch uh, pre-stretched double prime canvas, and I've just sort of painted a little, little design right here. It just sort of goes around and right on into nothing there. It looks like a big eye or something right in the center. Now then, I've let the black gesso dry completely. And then onto that, I've taken a little bit, a very small amount of the liquid clear and covered the entire canvas. So a very, very small amount. And then we've just made a mixture of uh, alizarin crimson, a little thalo blue to make a lavender. And we've covered the entire canvas with it. And that's all we do. The only reason I put the liquid clear on the top of the black gesso is to make the application of the firm uh, lavender color much, much easier. And you'll see that it really pays you great dividends. And I thought today, I thought today is such a fantastic day that we just, we just have a good time. So let's start out today with a little titanium white. Right on the old two inch brush. Shoot, get right in there with a the big one. And we'll just load a little color onto the bristles just by tapping. Put a little color out and just tap it. That's all you have to do. Okay, let's go right up here. Now today, I want to have a nice light shining right out of this area. So we're going to start right in here with this very light paint, this pure white, and just begin working this outward. Just let it work outward. Just making like little crisscross strokes right there. This will be our light area in this painting. I want to do a painting, I think in my mind I see a painting that, well, like maybe there's big trees here and there's like a stream of light coming through here. It's just zinging right through there like that. And we can even take and pull it and gives that impression already. But that's going to be our light source in this painting. And these paintings can be done in a multitude of colors. I've just picked lavender today because that's, that's a nice color. And it's a nice day, so I thought it would work well. But you could do them like in, in phthalo blue or sap green or any of the transparent colors. And if you're in doubt as to whether a color is transparent or not, take a little bit of it on your finger and just rub it on a black canvas. If the canvas still looks black, then it's transparent enough for what we're doing. It may only be semi-transparent, but it'll work for what we're doing. If you put it on here, like white, for example, you put it on here and you can see the color, then it's not transparent enough for what we're doing, okay? That's an easy way to, tr to try it out and, and see. Let's wash your brush. That's the fun part. Shake it off. <laughs> and just have a good time with it. Okay, tell you what, let's go right up here. Let's have a little lavender, a little phthalo blue, lizard crimson, and we'll just sort of mix these on the brush. I want this one, this lavender color, more to the red side, so we'll add more crimson than normal. There. And I'm just going to tap a little color into the bristles. Be right back. Let me get a little touch of white. I want to lighten that even more. There, maybe even a little more of the reddish color. Good, I like that. Tap a little color right into the bristles, like so. Okay, let's go right up here. Maybe back in here, we can make out the, the indication of some nice little trees that are hanging over here. So all we want to do here is just put the indication of some beautiful little branches right here. I don't want this to get too dark because it'll ruin that illusion back here. There. And all we're looking for is very basic little shapes. We're not looking for detail at this point. Just very, very basic little shapes. Maybe back in here you can see the indication of some very soft little things. Okay. Now then, let's take our liner brush. We'll dip it in a little of the paint thinner, a little paint thinner, and we'll go right into that same color. We want this to be thin like water though, thin as ink, and turn the bristles when you pull them out. That'll bring it to a very sharp point. See there? Okay, let's go up here. Now then we can go back in here and begin putting here and there the indication of a few sticks and little limbs that you can see, little trunks. There, see, just drop those on wherever you think they should live. That's exactly where they should live. There. 
wouldn't this be a perfect place for my little squirrel to live? I hope you've got to see him during this series. I've showed him a couple of times. Actually, it's a she, but beautiful little creature. There we go. Okay, maybe, maybe right here we can see something that's a little bigger. Just sort of let your imagination go here. Now then, let's take, wash the old brush. Let me find another two inch brush. We'll take a two inch brush here and I want to make a very, very light lavender color. Very light. So I'll pick up a little of that lavender that we were using, go into the titanium white, maybe even a little more of the crimson. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Or you could use a little touch of the bright red. Let's have a little of that. That's even better. Now, tap the bristles. Once again, that loads that little, little edge of paint right out on the tips of the bristle there. Just give it a tap, a little push. You can see that See that little ridge of paint comes up right there? There's also a corresponding one on the bristles, and that's what we actually paint with. Now then, we can go up here, and the light's singing through here, so we're gonna have some very bright areas. There we go. Just tap them in. Mm, that's beautiful. And it works so easy. All we're using is just the corner of the brush. Just the corner of the brush. And just begin thinking about all the little various shapes here. There. All kinds of nice things just, just sort of hanging around there. There we go. And you have to make a decision where they live and how many there are and where they hang out at. There. Maybe a little more right there. And that gives us a nice light area in this painting, right back in here, very lightly. One hair and some air, just barely touch. You can pull over that to help create that illusion of light rays coming through there. But just barely, barely touch so you don't distort any of this that you've painted up here. Now then, let's go back into our lavender color. And we'll begin working forward with this. Just begin working forward. Take a little of the lavender on the two inch brush, load it the same way. And maybe we begin to see some little tree shapes that are closer to us. All we're doing right now is putting on some dark so our light will show when we put it in there. There. This is the way we begin creating distance and depth in this painting. And we're not concerned with this side over here. All we're looking for is this nice edge right here. At this point, later on, we'll be concerned with everything. But right now, that's all we're interested in. Now then, let's take a little more of that light color. And as you notice, we're working in layers. Tap a little bit more of that light color onto the brush. Just tap it on there. Maybe even pick up a little, there, a little bit more of the thalo blue. As it gets farther away from the light source, it's gonna get a little darker little more blue into it. There. Okay, let's go up here and try this. Now then, we can begin coming in here. Oh, that's nice. There. Isn't that fantastic, though, that you can take a brush this big and make something that looks that delicate? And you can. You really can. There we go. These are beautiful paintings to give to, if you have a young friend, this is a super painting for a young friend because this looks like something right out of a fairy tale if you do it right. And you could, you could go back and add in any kind of little characters that you wanted to, whatever. Maybe, maybe there's a, gonna be a path down here. So we'll begin, we'll begin hanging some nice grassy things and, that hang right over the edge of this path just like so. And we'll come back and work on those a little in a minute. Right now, all we're doing is putting in some basic ideas. There. Okay. Let's go to the other side. Thalo blue, alizarin crimson, and you can just mix these on the brush as you go, or you can mix up a pile when you first start. Either way, whichever is easiest. Okay, now over here on the other side, 
Let's come right up in here. Maybe there's some big trees here that are hanging over like this. Now these are much darker because the light is coming from the other direction. These are very dark. And this darkness here will make that light look even brighter. The fact that this is so dark, see how that contrast just shows up? You can make some unbelievable effects like it's playing light against dark, dark against light. This black gesso, it's got to be one of the most fantastic things that I've ever came up with. There we go. It is unreal. Now then, on this side, I want these trees, as I say, to be much, much darker. So let's take, let's take, we'll use the same old brush that we've been using for highlights, but we're going to add a lot more of the blue and the lavender so it's quite a bit darker. Quite a bit darker. And once again, load the brush by giving it a little push. That creates that little ridge of paint. You can just see it pushing right up there. If it's not pushing up on your palette like this, chances are it's also not on your bristles. So that's a good way to sort of test it. I get a lot of letters asking about this, and this is the best way to test it. Push. Give it a little push, okay? Now then, with that little ridge of paint that we've built up there, now we can come up here and just begin putting in all kinds of little things. We let them get darker and darker up in here. There they come. Wherever you think they should be. There. Here comes a nice one. There it is. It hangs right out over here. Like so. Okay, maybe. And think about form and shape here. Don't just throw these in at random. Think about them. Think about them. Maybe here comes another one. It comes up and goes over. See, all these little things. Okay, maybe right there, wherever you want them. This really is an individual thing. Look at your painting, because every single painting is going to be different. Everyone's going to be different. One thing that we try to teach you is not to copy. We only want to teach you how to do a method of painting, a style of painting, and then turn you loose on the world. Because once you know how to do it, then what you do becomes the joy of painting. Because you can paint anything that makes you happy, that brings joy to you and to those that you care about or those that are around you. There we go. Now then, I'm going to add a little touch more. Maybe we'll add a little more crimson to that, just to, just to change the taste a little bit. Still loading the brush the same exact way, though. Push. There we go. See, that's a beautiful close-up there. You can see that right up tight exactly how it's loaded. A little push, okay? Now then, right in here, we have some things that are hanging out. And I made these a little lighter because in my mind, I think a little more light would strike right there. There we go. A little bit hanging right down there. Just all kinds of things. Maybe up in here. I don't know. Wherever you think there might be some big bushes and trees and things growing, just sort of lay them in. You'd think maybe there's little elves or leprechauns playing in here. There, add a little touch of the bright red to that. Just once again, once again, just to change the flavor a little. But these dark ridges that were in here from the paintbrush, and I use a foam applicator brush just to put this black gesso on, these dark ridges here, actually can become the walls if there's a little path here. Maybe there's, this is a recessed area, but you use these things that happen. Don't fight them. All kinds of magic happens here. All right. Now, maybe on the other side here, look at where you think light would zing through, and you can add a little bit of titanium white right there right out on the end of the bristles. See, and it'll, it'll give the impression that light's just zinging right through there. Hitting a few little things. Don't overdo, though, or it'll lose its effectiveness. We want to create that illusion of light coming through. Maybe a little touch right out here. There we go. And 
that's about all we need there. Now then, let's go back to our liner brush. We'll take the liner brush, a little dark sienna, and once again, this paint is very thin. It's ink consistency. Okay, let's go up in here. Maybe in our world right here, there lives a nice tree trunk that we can see. Now, if you have trouble making the paint flow, all you have to do is add more of the paint thinner. If it's not flowing, it's only because it's too thick. Add a little paint thinner. A little more of the thinner. Right. There. A few little branches and twigs and all kinds of things happening. Shoot, maybe there's a Maybe there's a little stick that lives right there. I don't know. Wherever you want them. See there? Just drop them in. Drop them in. Okay. Now we can take just a little bit of light paint. And just, I'm just using a little bit of titanium. Once again, think about where the light would zing through there. And we can add just the indication of a little highlight here and there where you think it would hit on this little trunk. And really pop it out. Just make it stand right out. Maybe the light's going to hit right here. I don't know. Sort of just look at your light source and make a determination where you think it would hit. There. Okay. This gives us all kinds of little things happening in there. Now then, maybe in our world, maybe we're beginning to see a little bit of green. So we'll take a little yellow. I'm using the same old dirty brush. A little yellow will be right back, right back. I'm going to add a little black to it. Black and yellow make a beautiful green. Tap us a little color in there. Now maybe, maybe we'll add a little Van Dyke Brown just to dull it. Now maybe right in here, we have, look at the, look at that. There, see? All these things are just sort of hanging over here. And just by changing the angle of the stroke here, you can create the illusion that things, that maybe this is the nice mossy things that are hanging over the edge of a bank. I'm going to tap the brush into the least little touch of red, bright red. And Indian yellow to make a nice orange. Maybe there's some nice little flowers on this bush. We don't know. So let's see how easy you can put all kind of little things in there. Once again, it just sort of changes the flavor and it makes those nice things happen. Now then, time to get serious here. Maybe up in here, let's go way up here. Maybe there's some big overhanging tree limbs. Now then, we can just begin taking the brush, using just the corner, and begin shaping all of these beautiful limbs that hang over here. But really, devote a little time to looking at the shape and the form that you put in here. Don't want to just throw them on at random. Don't just throw them on. Think about them. Think about the fact that there's limbs inside of this tree. Maybe there's a big trunk over here that we can't see. And there's limbs in here, and each one of these limbs has a personality all of its own. Each one of them. There we go. Let's see how you can create that illusion. It looks like just huge, huge branches hanging over. Now, if you've never painted before, this would be an ideal painting for your first attempt because it's, it's probably one of the simplest paintings of this series, and it works. It works so well. It's very, very nice little painting to learn. Maybe here comes one all the way over and right across like that. There, see? But just play with these little things and bring them together and work with them. Be careful that you don't lose all your dark areas because if you lose all that dark, then you're going to lose the illusion of this very subdued place, the 
very quiet places, deep in the woods. There. Okay, what? Maybe right here. See? Let all these things just work out. Now, a little brighter yellow right here, because in my mind, there's going to be a little more light right here than there is back over here. When you're back over here, we use a much darker, more subdued color. There. Okay, now then, let's come back out here, and let's use a color that has a little more of the bright in it. Just let it, just let it work right over like that. Sparklet. And when we get back in these more recessed areas, a darker green. Mm. Has this made you want to get your paintbrush out yet? This one you'll like. As I say, even if you've never painted, this is a beautiful little painting to do. We travel all over the country and, and teach classes and do demonstrations. And this is one that, that students love so well. There. But see what's happening down here. Already you're beginning to make out the, the illusion of a little path down here. We haven't even painted anything here yet. We will. But at this point, all we're doing is just creating that illusion with big trees hanging over. Tell you what, let's do. Shoot, this looks good. Take a little more of the midnight black. Let's get some sap green in there, too. Oh, that's nice. A little bit of brown, be right back there. Add some Van Dyke brown in there, only to dull it. Dulls the green down. Now then, push that brush. There's that little ridge of paint we talk about. There, just give it a little push, see? It works very well. Let's go back up here. Now then, maybe on this side there's some big trees too. Who knows? So, make a decision here. Drop them in. Here they come. See there? Just bring them. Maybe they come right across over here. And if you want to make them stand out a little, add a little more of the bright color. And then they'll come right out and they'll stand in front. Like so. See how that pushes that other layer of trees back? This is an excellent painting, though, to give you a lot of practice making all these beautiful things. But form and shape, I can't say that enough are most, most important when you're doing this. Most important. And as I mentioned earlier, try not to kill all the dark area in here. If you kill all this dark area, then you're going to lose that distance. There. Isn't that fantastic? You know, I think I mentioned earlier in the series with the completion of this series, there will be well over 230 shows. Son of a God, I can't believe. And I sincerely appreciate the fact that you keep allowing me to come back into your home and, and bring you new shows and new ideas. And it's very special to all of us here. And I'd like to thank you for that opportunity. And if you'd like to keep seeing the shows, or you'd like to see some of the ones that you've missed, Give your station a call. Let them know that you'd like to see them. That's the only way they have of knowing that you're enjoying them. There. Maybe right on down, wherever. See, just sort of make a decision and drop them in here. Where you think they should be. I tell you what, let's have some fun. Maybe, maybe right in here. Maybe right in here. Let's take some, we'll take some Van Dyke Brown. We'll just pull it out very flat, cut us off a little roll of paint. So you pull it out as flat as you can get it, go straight down with a knife, go zoop, and there's our little roll of paint. Maybe there's a huge tree, huge tree, lives right here. We'll just put in some brown. Straight Van Dyke Brown. Maybe it goes right on up here. Maybe you can even see a little up here, wherever you think it should be. It's just straight old Van Dyke Brown. Now we'll take some white, a little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna, mix them together. But I want them marbled. I want, I want the color to be very varied here. So 
you don't end up with one color. See all the different color combinations? Now when you cut off your little roll of paint, those variations will be right in there too. And let's go up in here and just touch and barely graze the canvas. There comes that big tree. There he comes. He's got a huge foot on him. And he needs that to hold him up, a tree this big. And this is just like laying snow on the mountain here. Just barely grazing the canvas. Barely grazing. Up here, maybe a little light shining through. There. See how that... Just by doing that, though, it gives the impression of bark. Old rough bark up here. And a little bit of brown so we can dull it over here. We don't want this side to be as bright as that. So I just take a little brown, dull it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's take a fan brush with at least a little of that brown and white on it. And let's go back in here. Just here and there. Put the indication maybe of a little path. We don't want a lot of detail. It's too dark in here. You can bring that right on out. Create a beautiful little path. Back to our brush that has the green on it. <laughs> and let's come down here and put a little bit of green, little grassy areas right along the foot of this big old tree. Like so. Isn't this a fantastic little painting? Once again, this is an excellent painting though. Even if you've never painted before, you can make this one work without any problem. And with that, I think we're gonna call this one finished. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you try it. From all of us here, happy painting and God bless my friend.